Welcome to this latest episode of Japan's Top Business Interviews. Today, I am here with the President and CEO, Mr. Kenichi Fujita of Siemens KK. I'm your host, Dr. Grace Story, the President of Dale Kangani here in Japan. Welcome to the show, Fujita-san. Thank Hi. you very much. Great. Good Thank to you. see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you've had a, a very interesting career. I don't know. And, uh, well, I think it's pretty interesting. But for the sake of our listeners and viewers, can you talk a little bit about your career and how mm -hmm. you came to become the president mm -hmm. of uh, Siemens KK mm -hmm. Japan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in small words, so firstly, I started my business career at a Japanese company oh. um, by spending the approximately 15 years. And with Which company was that? Um, it is called uh, Alps Electric. And uh, for, uh, later on, um, the division uh, where I started working became the uh, independent company after carve out oh. of the business. And it, wa it, it used to be called Alpine. And uh, the company was in charge of uh, working for the uh, uh, automotive components mostly, and also audiovisual equipment and CD player, like such as CD player, and also car navigation system later on. And uh, within these 15 years, I was working in Germany 10 years. Oh. Yes, uh, quite less experiences in Japan, but the outside Japan, mm. we are more than 10 years I was. And after that, I changed my uh, job completely uh, to, uh, by becoming the uh, business consultant. And at that time, I was uh, working at the uh, um, so-called think tank called UFJ Institute, uh, leaded by uh, one of mega banks in Japan, uh, UFJ or, U or United Financial Group. And after that, joined to Siemens. So that means 15 years as Japanese manufacturer, 10 years as business consultant, and uh, approximately, let me say, 12 years uh, at Siemens. That is my career. But within the Siemens, I was also working at the headquarters. Uh, in Germany, approximately three, uh, three years, so twice three years. Right, indeed. Yes. So when you were with Alpine mm -hmm. and you're in Germany mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. were you in a uh, managerial role there mm -hmm. or a technical role? Were mm -hmm. you managing teams mm -hmm. inside the company there yes, in yes, Germany? Yes. Yeah, I was uh, one of board members and uh, in charge of management, like uh, corporate planning, for example, or uh, business development and the partially uh, sales and uh, back offices. So your, your team are made up of mm. uh, Europeans, I guess, mainly Germans. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I had no Japanese stuff over no there. No Japanese stuff. Uh, right. Nationality was quite interesting. So I guess one, two, three, uh, probably five different nationalities I had in my organization in at team. that time. Yes. So when mm. you when you're in Alpine before you went to mm. Germany, mm. I guess you were managing a mm. Japanese team. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So can you talk a little bit about the mm. contrast because mm. you've been managing a Japanese mm. team mm. in mm. Japan. Mm. Now you're in Germany mm. and you got a whole bunch of Europeans, mm. yeah. five nationalities. Mm. What was different for you mm. between mm. managing a Japanese mm. team mm. and managing mm. a European yes. team? Yes. Uh, Greg, that is a really good question because uh, before going to uh, Germany, um, I I was working for domestic market, um, leading the uh, sales organization in Osaka. And uh, at that time, so I how say I was delegated to one of sales companies, uh, and uh, how say leading the uh, local sales people under me. Although I was quite young, and the typical sales you know activities in, in Japan. And after going to Germany. Of course, what I found was completely different, you know, so structures in terms of sales or, you know, customer care or customer relationship management and so on and so on. Therefore, uh, it automatically became the uh, big question mark. What is the uh, cross-culture, culture issue? And uh, that became the uh, uh, one of the reasons why I changed my job from uh, international uh, business to business consultant. I had, at that time, I had uh, many questions in my mind. Why people think different? Why people uh, perform uh, perform different? What were what mm -hmm. some of the things mm -hmm. around 
the differences in thinking. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. did you find? I mean, you come from Japan, you go there, mm -hmm. and then you realize, oh, mm -hmm. hang on a minute, these people mm -hmm. got a different mm -hmm. way of looking mm -hmm. at things. What mm -hmm. was different? Oh, yeah. Um, in one world, it's easy to say, where people say culture. However, you know, cul as, we, as you know well, so culture has a different, you know, uh, aspects. And language is one of these examples, of course. And uh, understanding for the leadership, this is also very much different and as you also uh, previously said groupism and individualism that idea you know so versus you know uh, things and uh, also uh, uh, leadership is also completely different so if what was different about the leadership how would mm -hmm. a how would a german or european leader mm -hmm. lead mm -hmm. that would be different to how mm -hmm. a japanese leader would lead yes i can tell you one story because the, uh, my son was born in germany and went to the local school and while he was uh, eight years old, so we came back to Japan, and he went to the uh, Japanese local school. And on the first day, uh, at the appearance day, uh, what I found was he was completely different <laughs> because he got the Western, you know, education. And uh, it's it's a little bit difficult to explain, but uh, he was really individual. Regardless, teacher asked him, him to uh, answer, or regardless, uh, how say, uh, the answer is not asked. He immediately starts saying, "Oh, I know the answer, teacher. Yeah, so, Miss Miss So So, I know the you know answer. Uh, I think blah 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 like this, something like that." And uh, that means insisting himself or herself. Uh, that idea somehow basic matter uh, which he learned. However, uh, in a Japanese school, that idea you know uh, one thing which must be avoided. So that idea you know culture difference issue. So don't stand out don't in understand Japan, that, blend right. in, yeah. fit in, mm -hmm. be the same yes, as everybody yes, yes. else. Also, uh, at the meeting, for example, uh, mi uh, with mixture, you know, nationalities, normally Japanese is quite, uh, how say, quiet, I have to say. However, uh, if you think that he, they do not want to t talk, that's wrong. They want to talk. However, they are missing the, the timing to start talking. Is that because it's a language issue? Would that be the case if it was all Japanese? I think a Asian? culture, communication way. Mm, because, the, for example, you, yes, you're a Western guy, I'm a Japanese guy, and uh, we are talking to each other. And uh, after, uh, or if you feel that I finish talking, immediately you answer or you reply or you react, you know, by speaking. However, for the case of Japanese, we take the uh, one tempo in between, you know, our comment and uh, your comment finished and our co my comment, something like that. So such, you know, very small difference. However, it makes a big difference at the end. And why is that? Why, mm. why would Japanese need one tempo mm. between start and finish? <laughs> what, what drives that need to have that I don't break? know. I don't know the reason why. But uh, anyway, uh, maybe, maybe I assume that we are respecting the harmonization, so harmony. Therefore, to create a harmony, maybe one tempo is required so understand, to understand each, understand each other. Mm -hmm. If you are very busy to insist to yourself only, you don't care. Yeah. So what kind of comment do you listen to? It doesn't matter. Therefore, yeah. you can immediately, you know, so reply or you can immediately uh, express your comment, something like that. So I guess the, that pause mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. is showing some respect mm -hmm. to the person who just spoke mm -hmm. and you are, mm -hmm. you are taking yeah. their words seriously mm -hmm. and you're thinking about what mm -hmm. they said mm -hmm. and then you're analyzing that mm -hmm. and then you're making your comment as right. opposed to in a Western case, mm -hmm. We're probably ignoring mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. what they mm -hmm. said and mm -hmm. only thinking about what we want to say. That's right. That's yeah, right. okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Interesting comment. I'm not sure, but I guess so. <laughs> it could be. Could be. <laughs> could so be. there's a hint for be. Westerners dealing oh, with yeah, Japanese yeah, yeah. business people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the Japanese person stops talking, mm -hmm. Don't be in a rush mm -hmm. to jump in and fill up the gap, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little mm -hmm. pause there a little bit longer yeah. than normal mm -hmm. and then make some comment. Okay, mm -hmm. great. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the Leadership Training for Managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. What 
of the things that you find were different. I'm thinking around things like uh, in Western culture, mm -hmm. personal accountability mm -hmm. is very high. You know, right. we, we build our careers mm -hmm. ourselves. The yeah. company doesn't build the career for us. No, no. We have to, you know, go here, go there, mm -hmm. work our way up through the system. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have to be appealing mm -hmm. to the people around mm -hmm. us, showing mm -hmm. our capability, mm -hmm. having an opinion, mm -hmm. very much pushing ourselves mm -hmm. forward. That's right. And uh, as you mentioned before, Japan mm -hmm. is not like that. No. People get promoted in a different mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So how did you find uh, leading Mm. those type of people who mm. are very pushy ideas mm. compared mm. to Japanese stuff how did you find that um, yes um, I, I I have been asking my, um, myself so why such a culture difference was created so between Western and Japanese cultures and uh, one of uh, how say hints uh, could be uh, uh, how say traditional um, society or structure of the society because the uh, ja Japan is based on the agriculture. Japanese culture is coming from the uh, agriculture, you know, so uh, customs or uh, how say social rules. And uh, the most of Western cultures are coming from the hunting, you know, uh, culture. That means uh, Jap uh, what is the most important for Japanese is harmonization. A harmony as a group, or uh, you know, as you just mentioned, so a uh, needle uh, higher than others uh, must be hit it, you know, yeah. something like that. That is the typical, you know, um, uh, Japanese style. Uh, that means harmonization uh, must be respected within a, a group or a team. That is the uh, Japanese way. And on the other hand, um, Western leadership is rather different, I have to say, because uh, somebody should lead others. And uh, if you find out the uh, rabbit in, uh, you know, on the mountain, z you immediately uh, go there together with your colleagues and uh, somebody should lead, you know, the team. Otherwise, rabbit is, will be disappeared, something like that. However, rice field doesn't dis uh, dis disappear. So regardless, you know, so you are rushed or not. And the harmony, harmonization to feed uh, seeds on the ground or uh, uh, harmonization to, you know, uh, in the harvest, you know, time, time, such, you know, uh, how say, real um, teamwork is very much respected. Therefore, yeah. leadership is different. So how did you find it, mm. though, coming from a agricultural mm. group work, mm. uh, harmonization culture? Mm. Uh, tempo is different for oh, the yes, speaking, yes, yes. and suddenly you're in Germany, mm. and you've got all of these Europeans there, particularly mm. mainly German German colleagues, mm. I guess, mm. who are quite different. How? Did, what did you find mm. yourself mm -hmm. as a challenge to mm. lead oh, yes. these sorts of people, which are quite different to Japanese? What sure, did you sure, find sure, was the biggest sure. challenge? Yes, um, what I have been trying to do is keeping the or having the uh, one switch in my mind, mm. in my brain. Western side, Jap Japanese side, okay. and uh, if you uh, make if you make a mistake to turn the switch to the different you know so direction, then you get a problem really, and that means so when I have a talk with uh, people from headquarters, for example, or at headquarters, uh, Western colleagues, um, normally I'm turning my switch you know on to the uh, you know Western side and straightforward, you know, short sentence, and uh, very, how say, sometimes very much aggressive to be honest with you. And uh, talking with Japanese, really different, you know, so angle or di uh, direction, that means so listen to, and uh, how say, um, try to harmonize the opinion, something like that. Of course, leadership is required to close it. However, somehow approach is different. For example, um, I've ever tried to, I made a mistake by the way, I've ever tried to uh, use the Western side uh, in terms of communication with my wife. Then immediately I got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so arrogant? <laughs> you know, so I, can't, I can't do it. <laughs> so, so I guess you know, you, you, you've been in Germany working oh, yeah. in Western environment all day, you That's come right. home, the switch is still on yeah, Western, yeah, right? I got the wrong, the wrong side. So. The wife and it's like, oh, what's going on? That's funny. So what other things came up for you in terms of mm. uh, being a leader in, yeah. in Germany that was different? Mm, being a leader in Germany is different. Um, leaders, leadership uh, in Western culture is very simple. 
concept is required, clearness of the opinion is required, and uh, also how to say logical explanation is required. Sometimes Japanese is more emotional, and uh, therefore, regardless uh, the opinion is logical or not, if they feel sympathy, sometimes they follow to the you know, leader. So such a difference is happening, especially for the case of uh, German people. Uh, logical, that is very much important, and that is what I learned in Germany. Mm. Yeah. And so when you come back to mm -hmm. Japan and you join Siemens mm. after being in Germany, you come mm. back to Japan. Mm. So you've got the switch to go back to oh, yes. the Japanese mode. Um. And uh, I mean, we talk about uh, often the speed of decision making mm. in Western companies is quite quick right. compared to Japan. Right. So did you find that rather mm. uh, invigorating for you in a Western mm. context that mm. decisions could be made quickly, things mm. could happen fast, mm. or did you not find it so stimulating? Mm. What was that mm. like? Did you enjoy that part of Western style business? Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. For, uh, for example, in my room, CEO's room, so you see a, a, how to say, a plate saying three different, you know, com, uh, different house mottos. And one is meeting 30 minutes. Second, conclusion first. Third, at the end, next action, something like that. And that means, so um, as a CEO, um, having also f much free time, I had to say, um, I'm trying to keep a meeting within 30 minutes. 30 minutes is okay. Yeah, if you like to manage minute, uh, meeting, or if you need more than 30 minutes, uh, probably you had better to uh, uh, send your document beforehand and ask me to read it and then start uh, from conclusion. And then if I have any questions about your background or more detailed you know, so things, then I, w I would ask you. But you do not need to explain you know, whole story from the beginning. So, hundred, uh, um, how say, um, in, ja in Japanese we say a very old ancient, so Merken or something like that. So long, long, long time ago, there, there was a small uh, village and the old, you know, so grandfather and the grandmother were living together and they went to the, you know, so woods and blah, 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 blah. No story is required, the conclusion first. That is already, you know, so enough to know. And uh, um, yeah, we just talk about the uh, uh, how to say uh, Western culture uh, can work in Japanese organization or opposite something like that. And the basic issue is uh, again, so same thing, culture. Therefore, um, in a Western organization, of course, I try to follow to the Western rule and the Western way. And uh, luckily, so we are uh, one of Western companies in Japan. That means, uh, so we, uh, you know, uh, how to say, diversity is quite, you know, common culture for us. Therefore, sometimes I'm follow following to the Western culture, for example, in terms of meeting. And then, uh, in, um, regarding the, uh, how to say, common communication with employees, sometimes I'm following to the uh, Japanese way by listening to something like that, and also making the uh, harmony within a group, something like that. However, uh, once again, um, as long as Jap uh, basic culture in Japan is groupism, somehow harmonization of understanding is required. That's the reason why they love doing their meetings so many times. <laughs> and uh, sometimes uh, one meeting to define uh, the uh, next subject of the meeting, something like that. Um, but the uh, actually, so it's not a, uh, how to say, uh, it's not the uh, symbol or example why uh, decision making is too slow, but it is a process to make the consensus between, you know, so a participant. But anyway, uh, we had a better to follow to the Western, you know, culture in that sense, meeting I mean, just talking about. Well, that's a good point. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you're right. I mean, mm -hmm. Western organizations mm. tend to be very quick yes and Japanese organizations mm. are building a consensus to get everyone aligned mm. and then execution is very mm. quick on the Japanese side normally mm. so when you're dealing with Japanese staff here mm. who are maybe looking for something a bit more emotional mm. a bit more empathetic mm. don't want the sort of cold mm. logical mm. you know Western mm. style mm. of leadership mm. Mm. How do you adjust to that? Do you mm. find that you don't have 30-minute meetings with your <laughs> Japanese team? You have to have everyone get together and yeah. maybe as a president, 
you sit there, uh-huh. you don't say anything, mm. you just sit and listen, they all talk, mm. and then at the end you do mm. some sort of wrap up. That's a very classic mm. uh, Japanese meeting style, isn't it? Right. Is right. that what right. you're doing here? Are you adopting that Japanese style for your team here? Yeah, that is the, uh, that's a really good question. So that is the uh, charac- uh, character, humans, you know, character issues. Therefore, uh, partially I can adjust it, partially I cannot adjust it, to be honest with you. And uh, for um, employees like that, um, normally so I ask for the, uh, how say, uh, summary, making the uh, summary of uh, her or his, you know, uh, issues uh, on a paper, but only one page, by the way. Oh, one page, one okay. One page, yeah, not, yeah. you know, 10 pages, you know, so. And uh, then probably he or she is able to summarize uh, his or her opinion, and uh, by focusing on the uh, real, real issues, that is su- uh, through the uh, such how say uh, predict uh, preventional, uh, you know, um, how to say work. So probably uh, we can shorten the uh, you know conversation. Mm. I do hope so, but uh, sometimes, of course, it's quite a difficult. Sorry. I'm guessing if you make mm. the rule one mm. page, mm. I'm guessing the font size is about mm. six font or something, <laughs> <laughs> so they can get as much on that one page as they yes. possibly can, I'm yes, guessing, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, Japanese love detail, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of, uh, you know, you're dealing, mm. as you said before, you've got headquarters and other parts mm. of Siemens around the world, mm-hmm. And you're providing your sort of cushion, I guess, between mm. headquarters and yeah, the local or team. Or shock absorber. Shock absorber, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What are the typical things you have to absorb as the shock between mm. headquarters and Japan? Mm. Uh, yeah, typical typical thing is as long as we, uh, I am in my organization called the Siemens KK in Japan. I'm a head of the organization. I'm I'm in the top in the top. However, in the global organization. I'm uh, part of, you know, so that organization, and that's uh, true. I have, uh, you know, so Siemens board members or Siemens CEO as my bosses. Therefore, um, anyway, uh, my position becomes different in the global organization, and uh, the ex- sometimes the expectation from local employees are focusing on me only because uh, I'm a head of Japanese organization. And sometimes they uh, ex- expect that I can decide anything completely, uh, like a god. However, I'm a, I'm not a god. I'm a, probably I'm a priest or something like that, but not a god. Therefore, sometimes uh, so people like me is requested to provide the uh, uh, provide what God is saying at the headquarter to our employees. So this kind of, you know, how to say, uh, double uh, deck, you know, communication channels are existing. And uh, it must be, of course, respected and it must be coordinated. That is one of our laws. Mm. Mm. Do you think, is it an uh, interesting question for me, mm? do you think it's easier mm. to manage Western mm. staff mm-hmm. than to manage Japanese staff? For me, yes, for me, Western staff is <coughs> much more easier. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I can shorten the time. Uh, of course, sometimes you sh- uh, you get a conflict of interest, you know, with somebody else. However, at least you, you can close the issue quicker. And also, what I love on Western side is, um, how to say, job fight is anyway within the job. And the private, you know, relationship is different. But as I said, a Japanese is quite emotional sometimes. Um, we mix up the, uh, you know, so occupational stuff and the private stuff. That means, for example, um, you're a gentleman from, you know, Western countries, one of Western countries, and uh, I'm a typical Japanese, and we start negotiating, and you won. I lost completely. Then, after finishing the meeting, probably, I'm so mad. Uh, so you s- if you look at my face, you can, y- yeah, you can, you know, so remark that. And probably on the way to go back to my home, still I'm remembering, you know, what I talked with you. And uh, uh, in my mind, I started saying, oh, that guy, if that guy is walking on a dark street, probably he should be careful or something like that. But it's wrong, really. 
So the job is job. Therefore, regardless, you know, get into a fight, get into a tough conflict. So after finishing the job, so on the private basis, we are able to keep, you know, so good relationship with each other, something like that. Mm -hmm. So that means, so if you respect the harmony too much, sometimes you cannot find out the any, uh, how to say, wall between private staff and, you know, so occupational, you know, obligation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was working in big organizations, global mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. we used to have these engagement surveys every year around the world and we'd uh, <coughs> then uh, go to mm -hmm. some local mm -hmm. hub in APAC, usually Hong Kong mm -hmm. or Singapore, mm -hmm. and we'd see the results and they'd show the world results on engagement <coughs> scores and of course, you know, India, yeah. you know, South America off the chart. <coughs> really high, yeah. Really mm -hmm. high. And then you'd have APAC, it'd be pretty mm -hmm. low mm -hmm. compared to America, Europe, etc. Yes. And then inside APAC, Japan <coughs> would be absolute bottom. Yes. And I used to get a lot of pressure, you know, oh, you know Japanese are not engaged, mm -hmm. the Japanese are not motivated, what are you mm -hmm. doing over there? Mm -hmm. So how has your experience been dealing with these types mm -hmm. of scores? Have they been pretty good for you in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, you know... The no, what you, what you just expressed is typical problem, so, um, which... Uh, probably all Japanese CEOs are having, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, thing, that is based on the culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're correct. For example, our engagement survey, for example, at Siemens, so the score in India is normally quite high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, or um, South America as well. <coughs> Maybe they have uh, such a you know, mentality. However, for the, ca for the case of Japan, so ja Japanese uh, think uh, that we are not perfect. Yeah. I, for example, uh, between one and five points, and the five is the highest one. Then how do you put the five? Because you are not perfect. Human is not perfect. Yeah. Nobody is perfect, something like that. That automatically the highest score will be four. And then next consideration. Um, maybe uh, we could do a little bit better we could do it a little bit better, or we could find out the uh, somehow better uh, performances, something like that. Therefore, maybe four is a little bit high. Okay, let's take three, middle, <laughs> something like that. So, no, that, that's correct. So, yeah. another, as another one of the characteristics which uh, typical Japanese uh, has, or Japanese typically has, is um, uns how say, uncertainty avoidance. That means so hating the uh, uh, hating to have the uh, uncertainty. That is the uh, uh, typical Japanese. Um, oh, by the way, this is uh, proven by the uh, uh, corporate research done by INSEA, the French, you know, so business mm -hmm. group. And uh, Jap Japanese really, really try to avoid any unclear stuff. Mm -hmm. Therefore, automatically, so if uh, he or she finds unclear stuff, automatically his evaluation goes down, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, another example of this, you know, uh, uncertainty, uncertainty, deness, avoidance is quality control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you get the uh, problem on quality, you are supplier, and you go to customer, you, you will be keep on asking the root cause, root cause analysis, countermeasures, and uh, root cause, uh, root cause analysis, possibly A, B, C, D, E. Once again, problem. Then uh, within the A, once again A, B, C, D, E, something like that. That means until no unclear stuff is on the paper, mm -hmm. you should keep on talking with them. You should prove, you know, so what was happening. What about the uh, data? What about the uh, you know uh, root cause to be you know expected? Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, such you know so how say uh, mentality is shown on the quality control, or quality assurance as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also I think the uh, cost performance issue for mm -hmm. Western companies. They think mm -hmm. yes, we can get to 98 percent mm -hmm. quality. Mm. But to spend mm. money to get to a hundred right. is a, so much money. So much money. We will not spend the money. No. We will go for ninety-eight. Right. But the Japanese customer wants better than a hundred percent. So That's right. how do That's you deal right. with that sort of problem? Um, <clears throat> as long as we are working in Japan for Japanese customers, sometimes we are forced to follow, you know, that idea. 
But the, according to our internal rule, of course, you know, last one mile or uh, you said the two percent is so difficult to manage to manage with, especially uh, in the headquarters organization. It is almost impossible to follow. Um, then uh, our law, that in the regional, you know, regional company's law is coming up. So we are in between headquarters mentality or headquarters rule and uh, Japanese customers. Therefore, uh, what we try to do is uh, harmonize, you know, both things and uh, finally uh, find out the uh, compromise. Because the uh, compromise, I do believe that compromise is no negative word at all. Uh, as long as you have uh, two different, you know, values or two different cultures, you know, conflicting each other, somehow you should compromise them. Otherwise, you have no chance to close the issue. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the major, major, really major laws of uh, regional you know, uh, entity, like uh, especially in Japan, I have to say, because the culture is so different. If you want to sell more and do it more easily, do the Winning with Relationship Selling course. If you can't build trust, no sale. Can't design excellent questions to understand the client's needs, no sale. Can't present the solution convincingly? No sale. Can't handle objections properly? No sale. Can't close? No sale. Master the sales process by doing the winning with relationship selling course now in either Japanese or English. So, you know, you have the engagement scores, mm. they come out, India, Brazil, off the chart, mm. Japan down the bottom. Yeah. So you get pressure from headquarters, you know, sure, oh, you've got to sure. lift the engagement. So when you get that type mm. of direction, we want to see those numbers go mm. up. Mm -hmm. What do you do in Japan to get Japanese staff to feel more engaged? Mm. Um, yes, um, as long as you understand the uh, culture of Japanese, um, I think you get the uh, chance to improve it. Because the, uh, as I said, so they love harmonization or harmonized, you know, behaviors, and they love sympathy. They love, you know, uh, how to say, um, groupism, something like that. Therefore, uh, somehow, uh, if you ex expect, you know, very strong Westernized leadership to everybody in Japanese organization, it is impossible to manage. But the probably you can find out the uh, you know twenty percent of people uh, having the rather good leadership. Then find them out, then ask them and work with them, and then tr uh, finally ask them to lead his or her team. And also you you will have to oblige to support him and also coaching him, and then try to uh, make. Uh, how to say, a kind of clones of yourself. Then finally, so probably you are able to see the team uh, working proactively uh, without you. Sometimes you should watch it, but anyway, without you. And uh, then piece by piece, so if you make such a, you know, I'll say, uh, a member in, in the organization, maybe um, proactive and the leadership oriented organization uh, can be possible. One of the things about engagement mm. is often coming back to um, the why, mm. you know, the purpose, the why of what we're oh, doing. Yes. And, mm. you know, often as a training company, mm. uh, we go into companies and on the wall they have the beautiful oh, frame, yes, yes, yes. vision mm. statement, yeah, yeah. mission statement, mm. all the mm. values, you know, mm. it's beautifully mm. arranged. Mm. And uh, we'll take that off the wall, mm. turn it around mm. so they can't read it. Okay. And we ask them, mm. what's the vision mm. of your company? Mm. Nobody gets it. Right. What about the mission? Mm. Nobody gets it. Mm. You know, 30 people in the class, mm -hmm. they usually have five values. Mm. The 30 people collectively come up with about two mm. values that okay. they can remember. Okay. So it's one of those issues that uh, at the top of the company, mm. the senior leadership believe mm. Mm. or we have defined the vision, mm. we have mm. defined the mission, mm. we have specified the values. Mm. Everybody understands, mm. everybody's mm. following that, mm. but in reality, they can't remember it. No. So if you can't remember it, how can you live it? How do you get around those sorts of problems here in Siemens? Uh, two things, one is, uh, if, you like, if you really, really like to uh, say fix 
トラゲットは、あ、ノターゲット、あ、ま、sorry、えー、コンセプト、あ、インザオーガンゼーション、プロバブリー、ユーハードベータ、トゥトークバーダー、トゥハンドタイムス。キープ、ワイトゥハンドタイムス。あ、あ、マイエクスペリエンス、メイビー、いや、ビゴゼイエス、スリハンドスティファイブデイズ、ウィハー、アズイエー、ハウエバー、ユーキャンドコミュニケーション、ウィザエンプロイズ、あ、スルーザウィーケン。And also, summertime, summer vacation. Therefore, maybe approximately 200 times, 200 days, I have to say. And、uh, I'm sure if 200, 200 times that、uh, do work or not, however, so many times.、Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, such, such a word doesn't go into the、uh, you know, deep, you know,、uh, or bottom of the brain of your you know, employees. Or another one is,、um, of course, you are keep on saying, you know,、uh, goal of the company or vision of the company. However, on the other hand,、uh, you ask them uh, to, uh, how say, to、uh, describe、uh, further actions or something like that. That means the reason why they do not remember is just they listened it. That's it. They've never described it. They've never considered it. They've never created it. However, if they do work for the uh, uh, other works relating to the、uh, vision, probably they do remember. That is the、uh, you know,、uh, human you know,、uh, nature、um, and also my understanding. Therefore, when I、uh, lead the uh, uh, team meeting, for example, of course, I, many times I show the、uh, goal of the team or goal of the session. Um, but yeah, after that, I do not describe or mention anything and ask them, please discuss, please talk about, you know, so、uh, please talk what we have to do, something like that. Then immediately the message is,、uh, go, go, message is、uh, going into the、uh, deep, you know,、uh, or bottom of their brain, something like that. Yeah, you're getting them to own,、mm -hmm. take ownership. Ownership, of right.、Uh, ownership. How many staff in Siemens in Japan?、Mm -hmm. How, How many? many staff in total? Oh, yes.、Uh, as group companies, entire group companies, we have、uh, 2,200 employees、right. here.、Yeah. And business wise, of course, you know, they are、uh, rather split it into the divisions or、uh, operational companies, something、mm -hmm. like that. However, Siemens is Siemens anyway.、Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you've got 2,200 people,、mm -hmm. How do you get the message? You can't meet 2,200 people in no, 200 no, days in a year. You're no, just not going to meet no, them. No. How, do you, how do you get that message to really drive down? Yeah. Do you know the answer, <laughs> Greg? I do, but I'm interested in what your answer is. <laughs> It's really you know, so tough thing. But、uh, as I said, keep on saying, keep on talking, and keep on sending the, send out the message. And also、uh, using the uh, uh, other channels to reach the employees.、Mm -hmm. As long as you are communicating with them、uh, within the organization, you take it the same way all the time. For example, CEO's message, or a newsletter as a company, or、mm -hmm. uh, maybe company <coughs> ceremony on the stage, something like that. However, for example,、uh, newspaper, magazine, press, media, they are also useful. And uh, sometimes uh, it's funny, but uh, uh, in terms of employees, or、uh, that's human nature probably,、uh, if you get the information directly from your boss through the newsletter or internal website or something, sometimes you do not trust it. But if you read the same message on the newspaper, you trust it. Because you do believe that、uh, um, newspaper is more. More, how to say,、uh, objective. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years' experience in Japan and will become your go to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Let me talk a little bit about innovation.、Mm -hmm. It's a very competitive market. Innovation comes at many different levels in the company. One of the issues in Japan. Is how to get people to innovate because 
the group uh, likes to stick in the harmony together. Mm. No one's sticking out. They want to get the hammer gets nailed back down again. But innovation in itself has a couple of issues. One is someone has to take some responsibility. Someone has to put themselves forward yeah. with an idea. And then the other part of that is innovation is a messy process and you have mistakes when you start innovating things. It's not so beautiful and exact all the way through. So Japan doesn't like mistakes. So Japan doesn't like stepping out from the group and it doesn't like mistakes. These are two of the key components of getting innovation. So how do you get innovation in your teams here? Mm. Um, I think so innovation, so that word, uh, maybe in another word, it is called uh, challenge, trial, something like that. And of course, you know, so you're right that the standard Japanese companies uh, hate to have uh, mistakes. However, sometimes we need to have a culture to accept mistakes because the, uh, mistakes it's, uh, themselves, um, they are not bad at all. But uh, what is bad thing is not learning anything from mistakes. That is so bad, I have to say. However, as long as you learn something new from mistakes, at least you, know, so you can be better than yesterday. And in that sense, so mistakes uh, from uh, challenge, from trial, um, it must be respected in the organization. And then uh, automatically the organization uh, get the uh, culture to accept more has a strong innovative, you know, behaviors or innovative leadership, innovative, you know, uh, uh, job process, something like that. That is what I believe. So, you know, again, it comes to this problem of you're at the top of the organization, mm. you have this view. Mm and you understand how the process works mm. somewhere in those 2200 people there mm. may be a middle manager mm. who's yelling mm. at his staff for making mistakes so you have this contradiction of yes we have to accept that mistakes will happen and learn from them but the reality can be that those particular middle managers don't understand that and they're just yelling at people and scolding them publicly, typically in Japan, publicly, mm -hmm. humiliating people for making mistakes, which kills that innovation process. So how do you make sure that at the bottom of the organization, mm -hmm. that those middle managers understand, no, you don't yell at people, we, we're going to encourage uh, trial strategies mm -hmm. and uh, you know, challenges to grow, and your job is to have a different type of conversation with people when mistakes come up. How do you drive that down to that level? Um, yeah, of course, you know, it's impossible to reach to the bottom of the organization every day. It's impossible to talk with, you know, whole employees individually. Um, probably it takes 20 years or something like that. But the uh, um, point is, um, making the uh, uh, symbol, making the example, regardless top or middle or bottom of the organization. That means one guy, for example, one guy, uh, he or she made the challenge and uh, quite beca uh, becoming the, uh, quite successful. Then find it and uh, um, giving him the, uh, you know, uh, prize or, uh, you know, um, showing the appreciation to him and uh, making a star in the organization. Then that star uh, is, of course, you know, so how say attracted in the organization in uh, any different type of, you know, so method. And then finally, he or she can be uh, one of the examples how we can be innovative in the organization. If you make it such you know, stars, maybe 10 or 20 in the organization, then um, I do hope that organization will change So in the future. It takes time, however, somehow. One thing I always find interesting in Japan, unlike the West, mm -hmm. is uh, often those stars mm -hmm. are very reluctant mm -hmm. to be recognized mm -hmm. because they worry, oh, mm -hmm. if I get recognized, mm -hmm. my colleagues are going to be jealous mm -hmm. and they're all going to mm -hmm. be talking about me. I get stabbed in the back. So don't make a big show. I don't want anyone to know about this. You know, they're rather shy to put themselves forward. Whereas in the West, yeah, I did a great job. I'm fantastic. They're pushing their own careers. Mm -hmm. So how do you get around that problem in Japan? Are some people rather reluctant to <laughs> yes. be publicly recognized, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, sometimes so people jealous, you know, so themselves, especially, uh, it's not by the way sexual harassment, but uh, if I compare the male and the female, 
probably male has more strong, you know, jealousy mm -hmm. uh, in terms of occupational stuff. And therefore, that is one of, you know, dangerous, you know, those things. And, but the, uh, um, as, but the typical Japanese star, Typical Japanese star is not equivalent to Hollywood star, you know. Okay. So what's, what's different? Uh, uh, with you know, so how say um, like uh, John Wayne style, you know, some very strong, you know, massive, and uh, with you know, so pistols and uh, you know, so gamma style. I had to say uh, it's not you know Japanese style. However, Japanese uh, leader is uh, maybe a little bit higher than others in the in a group. And uh, also, uh, he is taking care of other team members as well. That is the Japanese style. Because, um, coming back to the agriculture stuff, so you are on, on the rice field, and uh, your, your job is putting the uh, uh, seeds on the ground by using the 50 people. That in that case, everybody should work together by synchronizing each other. Therefore, even the leader is on the top, maybe his or her job must be watching everybody and asking them to perform in the same way or, or think by synchronizing each other. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, I think so. I do believe that uh, uh, leadership uh, required or requested in Japanese organization. Mm. Mm -hmm. Trust is a big thing in Japan. Oh, yeah, sure. You know? and so, both trust with the clients, of mm. course, and mm. then trust within the, the team. Your leader position is based on the trust. So how have you found the difference of building trust when you're working in the European side of the organization compared to when you're dealing with trust on a Japanese side? What was different about gaining trust when you're working in Germany with Europeans mm. compared to mm. gaining trust with Japanese? Um, yeah. Um, first, firstly, I have to say trust is very, very much important, you know, uh, one of very much important words uh, in terms of management. And in the Western organization, anyway, we need to have a trust. However, trust means probably, as my understanding, trust means fairness in the Western organization. And uh, that, that means treat people, treat things in a fair way. So that means treating everyone equally, no that's favorites, right. That's right. no special treatment for your people you like, everyone mm, relatively fair treatment. Not cheating anybody and also not you know, uh, promoting uh, only one specific guy by personal interest or personal will or something like that. That is fairness, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, or fairness, in the, uh, for example, at sports. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of fairness is very much required, but in, in the in Japanese organization, of course, fairness is required. However, uh, f this concept of fair uh, is not so popular in Japanese organization. Therefore, I do say honest. That is much more effective in Japanese organization. So when Try you say honest, honest, what do you mean by honest there? Honest means... Um, at least, at, it's a really basic matter, but I do not cheat anybody. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if I give the uh, clear messages, of course, I keep on doing that. I try to uh, accomplish them. And finally, uh, I'll say, um, I, do not, uh, I do not hide anything on my back. Of course, you know, as management, sometimes I cannot, uh, I have information or intelligence uh, cannot be disclosed. However, I do not talk about that anyway. Uh, but the, uh, for, for the things, you know, moving on, uh, I try to disclose as much as possible things. So being transparent. Trans transparent, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And it is called, I, in my world, it is called honest. Yes. Uh, of the, uh, honest uh, management, something right. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Mm. And so, you know, I've asked you a lot of questions about leadership. Is there anything I should have asked you about leadership which I didn't ask you? Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let me, uh, let me tell, tell you three things. Mm, One okay. is, uh, as often mentioned, so cross-culture. Mm -hmm. That is very much important. As long as you are not working in a small, cross-cultural organization. 
some that you requested to crossing over the uh, border or uh, you know uh, fly over the you know 10 hours or 12 hours and ask uh, being asked to work in a different culture something like that that the course culture is very much important even the uh, between yourself and your wife sometimes cross culture management is required because the your, your wife has different culture and the first point second point um, understand uh, try to adapt yourself into the into the culture uh, not only you know cross culture issue but the uh, also how say organizational uh, issues uh, I do believe that we need to do that. For example, uh, if you change your job, and if you change your company, and uh, company uh, previously you were working, and the company now you start working, maybe they have a completely different corporate culture. Then same thing, you should try to adapt yourself into new organization. If you s uh, keep on saying, uh, um, this company is something wrong. So because my old company did like this, my old company decided like this, my old company was like this, you will be spoiled in the new organization or by new cult uh, culture. And uh, third point is, uh, this is a special, uh, maybe special expression about the Japanese market. So uh, to try to be insider of Japan. Because Japanese, um, try to make the uh, clear uh, differentiation or definition if he or she or somebody is inside Japan or outside Japan. Typical example is um, if I get the uh, visitors so from Western countries or anywhere, foreigners, and I'm typical Japanese, then I welcome them and I handle them in the best way and smile listen to, no complain, and then treat them as guests because they are outsider. However, same thing, even same thing is happening uh, within, uh, within my organization. As long as you know, my, my counterparts are insider, I treat them in a different way. However, I speak with them with deep truth. No, how say, uh, guest handling however real you know how saying uh, I, I treat them uh, uh, as a one of, uh, as a part of a team on the same board mm -hmm. something like that so I think being insider or uh, still keep uh, staying as outsider that makes big big difference and as, as, as I said of course culture is one of the issues however maybe small even small trials saying good morning Japanese saying thank you in Japanese, arigato, something like that. At least people understand, ah, this guy is trying to adapt himself or herself into local culture. Then you get, they start respecting you because they, they know your has the effort. And also your characters uh, must be accepted by them. But as long as you perform like that, they do accept your character as well. Mm -hmm. So. Inside of Japan, that is really one of the key words to be successful in Japanese market. It's funny you should say that. We recently had uh, trainer mm. recertification training. Every year they mm. must recertify to mm. stay as Dale County trainers. And we had an instructor come from uh, outside. For the AP, he's the APAC head for training. And he came to Japan for the two-day uh, training. And in the middle of the training, he started counting in Japanese because we're getting people in the groups, you know, you're mm. number one, you're number two, mm. so each, ni, san. All the Japanese in the room, whoa! <laughs> you know, they were so happy were right. and so surprised. Right. He only used a few words in Japanese, but the impact on them mm. was immediate. And he was so surprised mm. that the impact was so immediate. So yes, I've seen that myself. Mm. Um, let me uh, ask you then, if you are a foreigner, and you're being sent to Japan, um, these days it's probably going to be a three to five year posting because of the tax situation, five years you're out, uh, three to five years in Japan, and you were to give that person some advice to be successful leading in Japan, leading a team in Japan, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Um, yeah, I already gave you my answer. That means so he or she should try to be insider mm. here in Japan, try to adopt 
himself or so herself. learn some Japanese. Learn some Japanese. Understand the culture. The try, uh, mm-hmm. try to understand try the to culture. Understand what's going. Mm-hmm. And also ask Japanese people if you have any questions, ask them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why they perform like that? Why they think like that? Why they, uh, how say, uh, why they um, behave, you know, like that? So question, question, question to learn. Mm. Um, maybe I said so. Uh, try to be insider, but maybe try to learn culture. That is also, you know, uh, one of uh, how say symbols that you are really serious uh, to understand local culture and uh, to respect local people. Something like that. Because often when mm. people are sent here, mm. from their point of view, mm. everything looks wrong, mm. and they've been sent from headquarters, and they're going to fix Japan. Mm. <laughs> and make it look like headquarters. Yeah. Well, that's how they start anyway. Mm. That doesn't last very long, but what you're saying is, mm. instead of trying to come in here and change Japan to fix mm. it, fix it as mm. far as you're concerned, understand better mm. why things are the way they are. It's not here by accident, it's done for a particular reason, so be open to that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What other mm. advice would you give them? Mm. Um, at least, um, maybe, my comment can be a little bit, I'll say, um, how to say, cannot synchronize each other because I, I'm trying to give you two comments. That means one is basic comment. So as you know, Japanese society, Japanese organization is well, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, well structured as pyramid. That means hierarchy is quite, you know, so high. However, on the other hand, another comment. So um, within the team, the hierarchy is not so high. Therefore, you try to be a part of the team. Sometimes some uh, big mistakes so, uh, done by a uh, high-level manager is, um, of course, in the big organization, there are definitions. So a person uh, specialized or uh, having the skill for decision making, person uh, giving the uh, special instruction, person uh, uh, were, uh, managing the uh, more frontline issues, person working on the real frontline, something like that. That means a person, decision maker or, uh, you know, leader or uh, has a dis- uh, leader or has a instructor, something like that. However, try to uh, break uh, such layers and uh, try to communicate with, you know, so different layers. Then um, probably you, are well accepted by Japanese employees. Oh, this leader is uh, coming to us and uh, try to understand us and uh, also giving us the uh, some advice, something like that. But as long as you are trying to stay on the top only, I'm a decision maker, give me a report, yeah, follow me. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a call to my you know managers, then you are losing the opportunity to be accepted by local employees. In, in some cases in Western mm. companies, mm. Uh, managers are reluctant to go mm. down the hierarchy mm. because they get pushback from their managers because the managers expected to go through them to the people at the bottom. But when you're mm. going around and start talking to people lower down, uh, there's some hesitancy there that the, you're, 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 not dis, you're not respecting the manager's position by going mm-hmm. around them. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying in a Japanese case, in a Japanese organization, the manager wouldn't feel offended if the top guy is talking to their staff mm-hmm. directly. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're saying? Um, yes and no. That means I'm not recommending to go to the office every day or every hour to talk to the uh, you know, uh, standard employees on the, almost on the bottom of the pyramid. However, at least uh, occasionally, for example, at the party or uh, any company event or even the customer visit, something like that. Uh, many times you get the opportunity to talk with people uh, who are working on the front or uh, or how say day to day, you know, maybe nitty gritty type, you know, so jobs and. Uh, then get the uh, sympathy from them. That is the uh, point which I wanted to say. Because um, if you listen to the voice of standard employees in Japanese organization, um, evaluating their boss, they, I've never heard 
Uh, that boss is clever. That boss is smart. That boss is, you know, so how say, uh, having a strong leadership. But many times they say he or she is a good person. That's enough to them to know. Mm, that's yeah. very interesting. Emotionally being accepted. Mm. It must not be, ro it doesn't need to be logical. Mm. Emotionally by stomach. Fujisan, that has been a fascinating discussion. Thank, thank you very much, very Greg. much. Thank you. I enjoy that. I yeah, really appreciate really great you. discussion. Thank mm. you. Well, what a great discussion we've had today with Fujisan, the president and CEO of Siemens KK Japan. Join us again for the next episode of Japan's top business interviews.